five surprising outcomes for foster parents who do respite care. Hi, my name is Genevieve Yanetta, and I'm going to do a really quick video for you today sharing some of my surprising outcomes that have come from doing respite care for other people over the past 16 years as a licensed foster parent. Before I jump in, make sure to subscribe below if videos about foster care, adoption, or respite care interest you at all and leave a comment and I will answer you back. So the first surprising outcome that I have realized as a respite provider for other people over the past 16 years as a foster parent is that sometimes foster kids can actually be better than you might think. I think a lot of foster parents are hesitant to do foster care because they think the kids are gonna be awful, they're gonna hate coming to your home, that they're not gonna adjust well, um, that it just seems so much for such a short time that you're actually caring for the kids that come into your home. But what I've experienced is sometimes, in fact, a lot of times, the kids that come into your home really are incredible kids. They often adapt way better than you might ever think than that a foster child could when they come to your house. They get to enjoy fun things. You can make pizzas with them, watch movies. You don't have to be strict like maybe a foster parent or a biological family member is. They are coming to your shore, to your house for a short weekend maybe perhaps or maybe a week or two. So you get to be like the fun aunt or a fun grandparent and just enjoy the kids. And what I find that when we do that, Kids are often way better and way more fun than you ever even imagined or thought they could be. The second surprising outcome for someone who does respite care is this, that just like sometimes kids are amazing and way better than you thought, there also are times where kids are not quite as good as you expected. So there are times where kids just don't adapt. I know for me using respite as a foster parent, there was one time that we were getting ready to go camping. We had planned and uh, prepared and we had, I don't know, maybe an eight month old that was in our home at the time. And we really wanted to, uh, to bond with our adopted and our biological kids. And so we thought, okay, let's just take a little bit of a break, take a weekend and use respite. Well, our little guy, he screamed so loud and so long that the respite care called us and said, you need to come back from camping and get this kid because I am done. And this was a really experienced respite worker. And so what did we do? We picked him up and we brought him camping with us. But sometimes kids just are so bonded to you that they don't do super well in respite. And so you may have both extremes, kids that do really extremely well and connect with you right away, but also sometimes kids that struggle a little more when they are in respite. The third surprising outcome of doing foster care and respite is this, that sometimes kids that you do respite for, you may bond with them instantly. And I've done respite to where the kids have come sometimes for a couple of days and the kids grab my neck. They insist that they don't want to go home and they maybe even shed a tear or two. And often what happens is I hug them as well and I often shed a tear or two because there can be a quick and instant bond with some of these kids. They may feel the love in your home or they may um, just love sitting at your table and eating dinner. Maybe they are in daycare and the foster parent that they're at, they work all the time or they're a single parent and they've never been in a setting which is like your house. And so sometimes a surprising thing about doing respite uh, as a foster parent is that you bond almost immediately with some of the kids that come into your care. And the fifth surprising thing that may come as a result of doing foster care and doing respite is this, that sometimes adoption can come as a result of foster care. So one example, um, and I believe I've shared this already, is that we were doing foster care for a set of twins and 
Um, we were headed to China. It was quite a while later, maybe eight months later. We had only had them maybe two weeks. And I get a call and this uh, foster care person that had these twins said, these kids are getting ready to go to an adoption placement. Would you adopt them? You would be the perfect home and I would love to connect you with the social worker and have you be their forever family. Well, in our home, we are super prayerful. So we only take placements that we feel like God is leading us to and we will only adopt kids that we feel like God has called us to. And so there has been numerous situations where people have called us and asked us to be the adoptive parent of their children. And we um, will can take it into consideration. We will pray about it. But if that does not seem to be a good fit for us, we will say no. And in this situation, we didn't feel like that was where the Lord was leading, despite really how beautiful and sweet and well-behaved these two little girls were. And so we don't understand it, how God leads or what he wants us to do. We just say yes. But sometimes you may have a situation like that to where you do respite and then later that child child needs a long-term placement or even an adopted placement and you may be selected you may be called by a social worker or called by a previous foster family and they may seek you out because they also saw that you were a good fit and you may be a home where that child potentially could be long term and lastly just like an added bonus here there are so many surprising outcomes from respite care. You may learn that you love it. You love scheduling respite and knowing when you're gonna have a child for how long you're gonna have it. You may love getting to meet so many different kids in the system and social workers and other foster parents that you might get hooked. And you may think that respite is something for you, particularly I feel like older people, I know in um, our churches, uh, what we see is there are older people who maybe don't feel like they can adopt. They feel like they're too old or they're, um, you know, just their age or their circumstance doesn't allow them to adopt. But respite care often is a really great fit. It's something that they find rewarding. It's something that's needed. Oftentimes respite care workers, especially if they're older, they'll come to your house which can be so nice for a foster child. They get to stay in the environment that they feel safe and they feel comfortable. They get to sleep in the bed that they're used to and have the sights and the smells, get to go to the school that's close to them. And it can be a really great fit for foster parents. So if you are considering becoming a respite worker, thanks for listening to these five surprising things about respite care and make sure to go back and listen to the other videos that I put out about respite, respite care. Um, it is a really rewarding thing to do. And if the time in your life and your family is um, set up to do respite care, I just say go for it. It's a great opportunity, especially for newly licensed foster parents to kind of put your feet into the water and test out what the system is like in these children um, in their, their scenarios, as well as for older people or for maybe single young people that don't feel like they're ready to commit to a longer placement. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, make sure to subscribe and come back next time for more videos like this. And remember, as always, as I say in every single video, go out, live bold, be brave. See you next time. Take care.